immigration request, we had to search out and seek a larger immigration firm. With that in mind, it's my sincere pleasure to introduce Lise Lot Minaya, Head of Operations for the Immigration Section of the Guzman Ariza Law Firm. Lise Lot, it's a pleasure to have you here today. It's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Please take a few minutes and describe to our listeners uh, a brief history of the Guzman Law Firm. Okay. Well, um, Guzman Arisa is a national law and business consultant um, office. We are the first and only that provides national coverage to our clients. We have seven offices that are strategically located in all major business and uh, tourism areas in the country. We are also internationally connected. We are members of prestigious international law associations, um, SCG and GGI. So um, we make sure that we can provide excellent service to all of our clients. We we're also founded in 1927, so we have vast experience in um, assisting our clients with immigration and also um, international investment and real estate investments. Lisa Law, tell our viewers, as the head of immigration, what exactly of the firm, of the Guzman Law Firm, what exactly uh, do your duties entail? Okay, well, um, I'm basically in charge of the contact with the client. I contact it directly. I make sure that the file runs smoothly. I provide assistance with all the paperwork and uh, with all the applications that you completed as a part of the immigration process. I make sure that the client is satisfied and that we provide an excellent service. Thanks. I understand there's um, three or four basic types of immigration available in the DR. Can you That's briefly right. give us a description of what they are? Uh, sure. Um, we have a program which is the basic program we call, we call it regular residency. It's a process where the applicant becomes a temporary resident for five years and then becomes eligible for permanent residency where um, he would get a card that is valid for two years and then continue to renew every four years. Then we also have what we call investment programs. Um, there are three different, different types of investment programs. Um, we have the Rentista one, which is for applicants who have investments outside of the Dominican Republic that report interests for uh, more than $2,000 a, a month. Uh, we have the retirement program, which is very popular. And uh, this program is for applicants who have uh, an, uh, an income coming from pension that is of $1,500 a month at least. And then we have a very special investment program um, that is focused on applicants who have investments in the country of above 200,000 um, US dollars. So basically then there is a program that almost anybody can fit into. Absolutely. Walk us through a little bit, uh, Lisa Lord. Is immigration a complicated process for people or people that don't really speak Spanish? Or is it complicated or is it a step-by-step? -step? Walk us through a little bit about it. Not at all. I mean, it's not necessary for applicants to speak Spanish to apply for residency here in the Dominican Republic. Um, we take care of everything um, and we accompany them for every step of the process. Once we receive uh, basic information of what the client needs, we make sure to assess their file. We take care of transportation, transportation lodging here in the Dominican Republic, and we have one of our paralegals accompany them every step of the way, so they're never alone, and basically it doesn't get any much easier than this. So, so they don't have to worry about coming to a country they're not familiar with and not being able to jump cabs or buses. Like It's a carte blanche, total concierge service from stem to stern. Absolutely. We make sure that all their needs are catered. Um, we take care of transportation. We take care of the language barriers. So all they have to do is relax and let us do our work. I'm going to sidebar here and we're going into something. There's that smile. But I want you to tell me about that. That was a perk uh, about how your clients don't have to fly to a consulate to get their passport stamped. You've got to describe that because that could save people fifteen, eighteen hundred dollars alone uh, if if there isn't a consulate in their state or part of their country. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, well, it's a very good point. Uh, we have very good connections with the consulates in the United States and other parts of the world. Basically, they have agreed to work with us um, by receiving the files by mail. So the clients, we assist them to um, arrange their files, gather all the documents. I provide personally all the information that they need. So I make the process as easy as possible. Once they have gathered all the documents, uh, we assist them to mail the documents to the consulate. We schedule the appointments. We make sure that the files are ready and processed. Then once the files are ready, then the documents are mailed back to them. So they don't have the, to leave their homes or travel to any consulate at all. So so basically, so uh, our viewers really understand, they're actually able to FedEx their passport to the consulate or DHL with a return paid uh envelope and they'll stamp it, return it to them, and they don't have to leave their home. Correct. Yes. Um, we make sure that wow. they, their files are completed, they mail their passports, the process is um, completed, and then the file along with their stamp passports are returned by mail to them. You know, Lisa, look, that really is a, a nice perk because I know people, sure there's a consulate in New York, Miami, New Orleans, mm -hmm. but um, for people living in Tennessee and this and that, that, yes. that can be an expensive experience. Yes. It seems that times are changing and that immigration services have never been in such a high demand. Is there any reason you can attribute to it, to the influx, or have you even noticed it? Well... Uh, well, the short answer is yes. I'm not sure I can pinpoint exactly what the reason has been, although I have been um, noticing an, uh, an increase of the people that are requesting information about residency and second citizenship here in the country. Um, I can't tell you exactly when it started, but I would guess that it has been about two and a half years since this started happening. And do you notice any one or two particular nations that are, the influx is stronger than other nations, or have you, where's Definitely. your client base coming? Definitely, most of them are coming from Europe and the USA, and, uh, but recently a lot of Canadians have been also requesting information about citizenship and, and residency here in the country. So it seems, oh, so Canadians are now actually starting yes. to? Yes, Interesting, interesting, okay. I have one more question that we, uh, uh, this is again a little sidebar, but I do want to bring this up. What about for customers, uh, not just ours, but new customers, customers around the world that are going to see this video, what if they are already started and got their temporary with one law firm, but it's time for renewal? Mm -hmm. Do they have to keep going there or can they come out and see you or can they switch and get renewed by you even though you didn't originally get them the... Mm -hmm. Yes, um, we can assist them with renewals. Also, um, given the information I already provided, if they think that they could apply for a change of category into one of the um, investment programs where they could get a lot of benefits with like tax exemptions, they can always contact me and I can assess their files and see if there's a way to change them from a temporary to a permanent, which would allow them to get a second citizenship faster. Fantastic. Lisa Lord, if our viewers want to reach out and get connected with you, what's the easiest way to do it? Well, the easiest way would be to go to the website www.somethingfailswrong.com and then click on the big Dominican flag um, that's on all pages of the site. They fill out a form with basic information of what they need and then we reach out to them. Gosh, that sounds easy enough. Um, Lisa, I really know how busy you are, and I want to thank you for taking the time to reach out to the viewing audience. Is there any last word you want to say or any last bits of advice? Well, it's just that it's been my pleasure to be with you, and we look forward to be of service of your, to your many subscribers. Um, everybody needs a second passport, and the Dominican Republic is just a great place to be. We hope you found this to be very useful, and as always, we strive to make relocation as seamless as possible. Until next time, this is Gary and Dion. We'll talk to you soon.